What's up everyone, Jason Turley here, back with more DVWA, the Dang Vulnerable Web Application. And today we'll be looking at the vulnerability called Command Injection. So running your own arbitrary commands on a system that you're not supposed to be. So if I scroll down quickly, you can see here in the lower left hand corner that my security level is set to the low. Uh, just a quick recap, there's three different security levels. Well, I guess technically four, low, medium, high, and then impossible. I'm gonna start off with low and then go through the medium and the high and show you how to exploit the vulnerability on all three difficulty levels. And then the impossible one, uh, I guess I'll do that just to showcase that there's no vulnerability possible. It just means that it's completely secure and there's no vulnerability there to be executed. Cool, so we see this box here, this prompt, it says ping a device and then enter an IP address. Okay, we can do 127.0.0.1, which is the IP address for local host, so your own machine. We hit submit and a few seconds later, it comes back with these ping results, 84 bytes of data, and we see one, two, three, four pings sent. The time to live is 64, indicating that this is a Linux machine. This is kind of outside the scope, but just because we're here and I'm already talking about it, the time to live value is how many hops, how many points this package will live on a router. So every time it goes across a routing uh, device, it'll decrement by one to 63, 62, and different operating systems have different TTL values, time to live values, with Linux being 64 usually, and Windows being 128. So that's a quick little way if you're doing a ping sweep or some type of pen test or scan. And it's not identical or it's not um exact, but it's a good way to determine what the operating system version is. All right, that was a complete tangent and nothing to do with this command injection thing. All right, cool, so that worked. So how can I get command injection? We see there's an IP address, but how can I actually run other commands? If I open up a terminal, let me clear out of this. I don't need to be root. That's from a different video. CD. All right, make this bigger. So you can run commands, right? W, I, D, who am I? You can run commands in bash, the Linux interpreter. If you want to run more than one command, there's a few ways you can do this. One way is a semicolon. So ID and I don't know. Who am I? So we see the ID command ran here, and then afterwards it ran who am I? We can do the same thing for CD and attempt, and then LS. So I changed into the temp directory, and then I listed it out. I listed out the contents. So we can do the same thing for this web app. We can ping some type of IP address. We can do semicolon and then some other command like ID. And we can chain these together, ID and who am I, hit enter. It's gonna take a little bit to get back with the results. We see our ping scan just like before. And then right here, we see the results of ID. Uh, I don't see the who am I, that's interesting. Can I hit control U to look at the source code of this website? Okay, so this is the HTML and the CSS just how the website is structured. Okay, yeah, so I guess it can only take one extra one extra command. So multiple semicolons didn't really seem to do anything. But that's how we did it. That's how we got the um, command injection for the low. So a quick little, what can we do with this? Let's ping a different IP address just for fun. And let's see what directory we're in, PWD, print working directory. Okay, var www html dang vulnerable web app vulnerabilities exec. Let's do an ls. Let's just do semicolon ls tech la. Let's forego the IP address completely. And you see that makes our result a little bit faster because it's not peaking anything. It's just running our command. We see source and we see index.php. We also see a help file. The help might have the answers, so I don't look. At, I don't want to look at the answers. LS tech LA source. Oh, cool. High, impossible, low, and medium. So we can cat this out. Cat source 
low.php, I guess. Let's start with that. Hit enter. Okay, um, not everything is shown. This is the closing PHP tag. Hit control U to look at the source code. Scroll down. Ah, here we go. So this is the code. This is the vulnerable function, I guess, the vulnerable PHP that we are attacking. All right, we see the submit button, the target IP address. Um, the command, the ping command will be different whether we use Windows or Linux. On um, If it is Windows, just do ping and the IP address that we enter. And if it's Linux, right, anything Nix, do tech C4, so only send four ping packets. So in Windows, when you enter a ping command, it'll by default only send four ping requests. Whereas on Linux, if you do ping and IP address with no other options, it'll continue to ping forever until you stop it. So, and then we see here, dollar sign CMD. So it's just directly running whatever we pass into the um, PHP code, right? So whatever we type in, it's just directly executing it here. So there's no input validation. There's no blacklist of like, hey, if you see any of these special characters error out, there's none of that. So that's the low difficulty. Let's go over here and change this to medium and see what it has in store for us. Command injection, click here. We can start typing our IP. You see it auto populates. It remembers everything that we entered before. If I hit enter, it's gonna do those four ping scans. So it's gonna take a little bit. That worked fine. Let me just do colon ID, submit. Okay, that took a long while. Also, my computer fan is heating up, so hopefully that's not too loud, but no results. What happened? Okay, let me do the IP address with ID. Uh, I can take out this. Hit enter. We see it buffering here. It's kind of slow. Okay, that didn't work either. Why? Like I said before, there might be some type of blacklist, some type of, hey, don't do this. So if you see a, um, a semicolon, stop. Like, don't run it. Don't execute. Error out. So I don't think the semicolon works. So how else can we run multiple commands in Vim? You might already know this, but there's a few ways. So we can do, uh, let me see the home. We can do double ampersands and lsec la, right? So cd into some directory, let's just say slash etsy, and then ls la. So cool, I listed out all the contents of slash etsy, but the um, ampersands only work, it's kind of like do this, do the first command, and if that works successfully, then do ls. So if I have like some type of command that won't work, so cd into slash, some directory that doesn't exist. Hey, no such file directory. It never ran the ls because the first command did not work. I guess just to prove this again, you can cd whatever, and then echo work. We never got the echo. But if I do cd this and echo please sub, it changed my directory from Etsy to my home directory and then it echoed out the sub. So that works fine. Okay, I beat that point to death. So what we have to do here, or what we potentially have to do is enter an IP address that it can ping. Jeez, I can't type. Double ampersand, um, ls. Yeah, let's just do ls. Hit submit. Ooh, that didn't work either. So if I can't do double ampersand, what other options do I have? Well, before earlier, right, we saw this. This didn't work. This never got executed. It only works if it's true. So let me do this instead of double ampersand. I'm going to do double pipe, right? These two big poles. Hit enter. So this will only execute if the other command failed. So I could not CD into this directory, right? No such file directory. So it printed out worked. If I do something that will work, like echo hello, the double ampersand echo bye. We see bye never gets ran because the first one worked. So it short circuited, it stopped. Like 
the first command worked, there's no reason to run the second command. So let's give that a shot. So let's do something we know will not work, right? So something that's not an IP address, hmm, I, or a host name, right? I can just do this, that will fail, should fail. And then I can do ID, hit enter. And that worked because the first command failed. They tried to ping something that was gibberish. It didn't work. So I'm like, hey, I can't run this first section. Let me run that second section. And it worked just like that. We got ID. And if we want to be cheeky, if we want to be cool, just like we did another one, we can cat out source medium.php, hit submit. I'm not sure why it's running super slow. It wasn't like this beforehand. Nice. So we see some of the contents here. Let's hit control U to look at the source code. I'm not sure why it doesn't format nice and pretty here. Okay. Now if we scroll down here, okay, we see the start of the PHP code and look at this comment set blacklist substitutions equal array. So these, I know it's kind of ugly. It's kind of hard to read. Maybe I can make it a little bit better for you guys. Zoom in. So if you see devil ampersand or semicolon, change those. That's what this arrow means. Change it to an empty string. So anytime we were entering our IP address, right? We were doing 127.0.0 like this. It would take this out and make it an empty string. And it was trying to ping this and that wouldn't work. Same for the devil ampersand. It was changing that to an empty string and it was like this. And that just isn't going to work. I can prove my point again. So ping localhost ID. It's not going to resolve. It's not going to work. It doesn't understand. And we see it's hanging and it's taking forever. So that's the medium challenge that has this blacklist that has this don't allow list. So let's see what we can do for the hard challenge. Change this to hard or high. Submit. Come back to command injection. And we can just start off with a ping, make sure everything works. Cool. That worked as expected. And I'm going to assume that there's also going to be a similar type of blacklist that won't allow ampersand or parentheses. So let's see if we can just immediately cheese it out with the um, double pipe, the or. We hit submit and that worked. Nice. We're able to do whatever we want on this system. We got command injection. So I know we're just doing little, um, little simple commands, right? We're not really doing anything that malicious, but if this was a real web server, something public facing, and we had command injection, we don't have to do like cats and LS and print working directory. And who am I? We can do um, some type of reverse shell, right? We can get a connection back to our host machine. I could start a netcat listener here, right? Netcat and LVP on port 8000, and then come over here and have the web application instead of running ID or LS or anything like that, it can call back out to our server. And now we have a remote shell connection, assuming that there's no like web app firewall or anything like that in place. So coming over here, scroll down. All right. We see the PHP code. Okay, another blacklist, but this time it filters out more characters. It filters out an ampersand, semicolon. It filters out the double pipe, but ours worked. Interesting. So if I'm understanding this correctly, this double pipe, the fail, the or operator, it shouldn't work, but it is. So maybe this blacklist isn't working as intended. Can I do the double ampersand? Does that work? We see it here too. Single ampersand is a um, background character. So run this command in the background, whereas two ampersands are do this. And if this works, also do that. Come over here. So no, that didn't work. So for whatever reason, it's not properly filtering out the double hype. So we're able to get our command execution that way. Yeah, just to confirm, we are on high, so. That's interesting. And just for laughs and giggles, we can move over to impossible. Submit, submit. 
and now nothing um, should work. So the double ampersand, this should fail, right? You have entered an invalid IP address. Okay. How about this one? You entered an invalid IP, so on and so forth. Okay, let me enter an actual IP address this time. Hit enter. That worked. So what's going on here, right? I can't cut out the source code because I'm on the impossible lab. So let's scroll back to low just for fun. Come back to command injection. Semicolon cat. We don't want low. We want impossible. Hit enter. Okay, it doesn't print the whole thing. So control U. Scroll down. Let me make this easier for us to read. That's way too big. Okay. So here at the top, this is the beginning of our PHP code, the server side code. Check token. So user token, session token. So we can't do any anti um, CSRF. I believe that's cross site request forgery. So basically using someone else's token, their access, their cookie, and just taking over their session that way. So we weren't going for that, but even if we were, we can't do it. All right, the IP address. So whatever IP address we enter, that's saved as a variable called target. And now that target is stripped. It's split and it's given to this function here. It's split on the dots. So an IP address, uh, you know what an IP address is, right? It has these four characters or octets, these four positions. So it takes all of those and it splits them up and then it runs it through this little check right here. It makes sure each octet is an integer. It's a whole number, right? So I guess this wouldn't work for host names because you can ping uh, google.com and that works. Right, that's legit. That's a common use case. I hit control C. But I don't think that would work with the impossible one. Come back here, change this to impossible, submit. Enter an IP address. Okay. So I guess to be fair, it does say enter an IP, not a host name. So it just checks all four digits, all four octets, and make sure that they're complete integers, they're whole numbers, they're not negative, they're not um, anything else. And it just, so if we add anything else, right, if we add any of this garbage that we were playing with, it's just going to get um, a failure condition, right? We're just going to get this error code every single time because it doesn't meet the requirements for a valid IP address. So it prints it out here. So there you have it. That's how I solved these commands injection section for all three. So I'm very interested to know if you guys solved it any other way. Is there anything I'm missing? Anything else I can learn? So there you have it. I'll leave any links and recommendations I have in the description box down below, as well with my Patreon and anything else I'm affiliated with. As always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.